Why do we work hard to solve small problems? Why do we reinvent ourselves and our clients over and over? And why are we giving away marketing strategy for free? It's time to bring home bigger paychecks. It's time to create the lifestyle we deserve and to make a greater impact. This is the Fractional CMO Show, and I'm Casey Stanton. Join me as we explore this growing industry and learn to solve bigger problems. Hey, it's Casey here, and I want to talk to you through a mental model about being a wartime leader versus a peacetime leader. And I think that this is one of those things that you'll need to kind of adapt to and know when you're in a time of war or a time of peace. I bring this up because when you're in a time of war, there are certain things you must do. And in a time of peace, there are certain things that you must do. And if you're not doing these things at those specific times, you're going to find yourself with a burnt out team that can't execute or won't execute or is frustrated or burnt out. You won't hit your outcome goals in these times of war if you don't do the right things in the times of peace. I also think naming this and creating a clear distinction will help you know where you're at. Sometimes we need a map in the work that we do, right? You're, you're a CMO, you're a fractional CMO, and as you serve a client, the traditional map is we're planning for the quarter and now we're executing for the quarter. And maybe you have other big events on that map, like we're launching a website or we're launching a new product or we're doing a, you know, a proper kind of like Jeff Walker style product launch. And like, that's a whole thing and we're all going to rally around it. But then there's also times when your day-to-day blocking and tackling comes under fire and you need to be able to kind of say like, hey, we're in a time of war and, and this is what I need from folks. So let's talk about times of peace and what you do. Times of peace are when things are good, when the company's good, when the company's really profitable, when the ROAS on ads is, is high and everyone's happy, when you've just beaten some competition on SEO and you're enjoying a lot of extra leads kind of for free. When you're in times of peace, things are working well, use that time to build systems, build repeatable systems. You got to be looking long term. What kind of support do the team members need? This is what you should be looking for as a leader. It's kind of easy as a fractional CMO to kind of like kind of kind of relax a little bit and be like, wow, the team's got it, we're good. But really, the effort that you got to put forward in these times of peace are to like build systems, look long term, equip the team with education. What education does the team need? Are the team members that you're managing, your direct reports as a fractional CMO, are they continuing to learn? Or did they stop learning three years ago, join the company, and they've been learning on the job ever since, but not really kind of committed to their own education? They're not taking YouTube courses or Udemy courses or going to live events or you know going to workshops or having a mentor or a consultant or whatever. If they're not, you should find a way to equip the team with education. Maybe you buy everyone a book, Dan Kennedy's ultimate uh, sales letter. That could be a cool book to send some people. Maybe do a book report every month, every quarter, whatever it is. You have the team members actively growing. You're also building within the team a mentality of solve bigger problems. You want them to take on the solve bigger problems mentality just as you yourself are taking it on as a fractional chief marketing officer. This is the idea of staying elevated so that you can see the easiest way or the the way that has the most leverage of achieving the outcomes. You want to solve the big problems, not the small kind of day-to-day skirmishes, but like the big battles. You want to encourage teamwork in times of peace, meaning you want interdepartmental teamwork and you want cross-departmental teamwork. How well in times of peace does marketing work with accounting or marketing work with product or marketing work with sales or marketing work with tech? What are your cadences for communications? When we're in times of war or times of stress, those communication channels are put under tension. And if they don't exist, it's going to be really hard to build them like on the spot, right? So you want to lay the foundation of good, clear communication. For example, marketing, you know, some lead in marketing could meet with a lead in tech every week. And maybe some weeks they get on and just speak for five minutes and other weeks they dive in and it's an hour long call. And that's fine in times of peace, but you want to have that cadence already set so that in times of war, right, you can, you can just kind of uh, be on those calls automatically, show up and just solve for the biggest problems. 
Also, one of the things I like to do, I like to let people cut out of work a little bit early in times of peace. I like to be the kind of CMO that makes sure things get done. And if it's a beautiful Friday, just like, hey, that's cool. Yeah, go ahead and take off. It's two o'clock on Friday. All good with me. Take off a couple hours early. No, you don't have to log it, right? I don't mind. I'm, I'm offering it to you as kind of this gift. You've been working hard. You've been hitting your outcome goals. You don't have to stick around at your desk until five today. You know, take off. And I want to give that gift preemptively, proactively. I want to provide an environment where people are focused, working well, getting educated, learning, building systems, building communication channels, and feeling like they're rewarded for their work. I want to build respect. I want them to respect me, and I want to respect them, and I want to have this open communication of respect, which is predicated on their ability to, like, do work that delivers a big result for the company and them feel confident in doing it. Like that's a great place for them to be. They're going to get a lot of sense of confidence in, in their own work and, and, and um, just like how they show up at the job. You know, above all, what you're doing is you're depositing into the bank account, into the bank account of the relationships. You have a relationship bank account with every single person on your team. And if you don't proactively deposit When you come to withdrawal, there's going to be nothing there to withdraw. If you're pushing people aggressively in times of peace, and then a war comes up, something bad happens, tech breaks, whatever, you need people to show up and really dig in and support, you're not going to be able to ask them of that because they're already burnt out. Because they're feeling frustrated that they have, quote unquote, unlimited vacations, but they've never taken a vacation in the last two years. You want to encourage people to have that lifestyle balance in times of peace. Now, obviously, you need to get the job done, right? Outcomes are the most important thing for any marketing department to achieve. But if you're on track for them, you should reward your team and, and let them have a great lifestyle, right? Let them enjoy the work. Let them feel like they're growing. Let them get smarter, more capable, more confident. It's only gonna help them and their satisfaction and your organization, right? Your client's team. It's just, it's just, it's just only going to lift all, all the ships there. If you're that kind of leader in times of peace, you will have the respect needed in times of war. Now, war, war might feel like a bit of a you know, misnomer right now because certainly no company is facing, quote unquote, war like Ukraine is facing war. So I want to be cognizant of that. But you know what it's like inside of an organization when shit falls apart. And sometimes you can have a week that is just perfect all across the board. Team is firing on all cylinders. You have complete satisfaction and confidence in the team. And the next week, you can see so many glaring issues. And they all, I kind of find, right? They kind of all kind of come up at once. It's like a comedy of errors. They just kind of precipitate. One person forgot something in a QC. Another person didn't do a UTM. Uh, then the uh, SSL expired. And right, like all of these things can sometimes happen all at once. And when that happens, you need to call in the team to really like kind of fortify their positions and, and, and be there to, to solve those problems. So during times of war, you can ask for late nights, you can ask people to stick around. You can say, hey, man, I know you've got kids. I know dinner with them is really important to you, but I really need you to stick around tonight. I'm really sorry about this. And they're going to feel eager to do it because they're part of something bigger. If you push someone every single day, 5 o'clock, 501, you're like, eh, you can go, right? What are you going to do on the day that you need them to stick around for an extra hour or two? They're like just going to feel maybe a little burnt out from the hard lines that you have on the day-to-day. So you can ask people for late nights. If you're a good peacetime leader, when you get into a wartime um, kind of scenario, you can also put a lot on people's plates. I don't like putting too much on people's plates, generally speaking. If I talk to someone and they're working more than, let's say, 40 hours a week, they're either not good at their job or they're at an early stage of learning, which is totally fine. And, you know, I kind of coach them through that. Hey, this might feel like a lot. Once you get over this hump of learning, you know, it'll become more routine. It'll be easier for you, yada, yada. Right? So that's cool. But during times of war, I am totally fine loading people's plates up with, you know, superhuman amounts of tasks. It's and and have the expectation that that work gets done. You're also going to stress the system in times of war. What is stressing the system? It's stressing the communication channels. 
it's maybe stressing your CRM. It's stressing Zapier. Are you going to just stress everything? So in times of peace, you should probably bolster and buttress your tech. If you're thinking of growing the company, right, as the marketer, you're going to do something significant. Like, let's say you'll double the company in the next 12 months. You should probably have marketing and tech work together in that first quarter to figure out what tech needs to be changed or scaled in order to handle twice as many customers or twice as many orders. You should have a process around all of that. During times of war, team members can get close to burnout or they can reach burnout. It makes sense. And again, I'm totally cool with it because like that's just part of the game. I don't want people to get to times of war, but those things happen in business. I don't want the department to have to work late nights and be overloaded with tasks and, and feel burnout, but it may happen. I'm not going to apologize for it happening, right? I mean, it's, it's a bummer that maybe someone can have dinner with their kid, but we're all going to get in and we're all going to fix it together and then we're going to celebrate and then we're going to get back to peacetime efforts. Next is there's going to be a lot of new and different things in times of war. What's new and different? Well, maybe, for example, the SSL cert expired. So when someone goes to your website, it says, this website has an invalid SSL certificate, you know, proceed with caution. Well, that's a really scary thing to show in front of like non-techie people, Ugh. especially if you're asking them to put in their credit card. That's a significant problem, and maybe you find yourself without a tech person because the tech person left three months ago, and there was no process to ensure that the SSL was renewed. So what do you do in that situation? Well, you got to dig in. You got to go find the creds for uh, the hosting. You got to get a credit card if you don't have one already as the CMO. Uh, you got to pay for the SSL. You got to get everything updated. Um, like those things can be hard. You may not even know what I'm talking about but you'll Google it, right? This is your job as the CMO is to figure out what needs to happen. Again, you don't have to do the work because you're not the talent doing the work, but you're the CMO that's leading the team to do the work. So you got to really understand the problem in totality. Next, you need the team to be in the foxhole with you. What is the foxhole? The foxhole is digging the trench together and they're in it with you. You want the team to be in the foxhole. I want the team in the foxhole in times of peace and in times of war but really you're gonna ask for it in times of war. I want people to show up and I don't wanna to have to ask for favors. I wanna tell them what's up and I wanna hear them say, you got it, I'll be there. Hey, let me call my partner and tell them I won't make it home for dinner. I'm in it until we get this figured out. Like that, that's the kind of relationship or, or, or respect or commitment that you want from team members. The mantra that we use is keep pushing, keep fighting. Every day we're pushing and fighting, we're specifically pushing and fighting in times of war. When things are falling apart, you need the team to have a mantra. You have to be that general that's leading the team. You have to have a rallying cry for all of this stuff. People wanna feel like there's some significance. Otherwise, why are they gonna work late? Why are they gonna miss dinner with their kids? They're willing to do it if it's for something greater and they feel part of something bigger. You see this war in Ukraine. You see all these men getting conscripted into the army. Just, just an incredible sacrifice that they're, that they're, that they're giving, right? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I, I can't even picture myself in that position. They're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for their country, for something bigger than themselves. It's, it's logical to them, right? It's emotional, but it's logical. They're part of something bigger. You want to create that kind of environment inside of an organization. Now, again, I'm not saying that there's anything like that in, in business, right? We're not talking about true life or death. But what we are talking about is commitment to something bigger and, and a feeling of purpose. So we can look at these external events and we can see how they have corollaries in business. And, and I really think wartime and peacetime is, is uh, kind of spot on for these things. Finally, during times of war, you're going to withdraw from the personal relationship, your relational bank account. And again, if you haven't been depositing, there is no way you can take a debit out of that account. You can't go negative. I mean, you can, but the expectation I would have is that if I ask people who have never really had times of peace for more, I would expect people to leave the organization, put in their notice, or maybe even just not show up to work. So this is what's in front of you. If you're building a team, you want carrot right? You want to encourage people. You want to 
build an environment where they feel calm and effective and capable and confident. You want them to achieve their outcome goals. But when shit hits the fan, you want people to show up, you want them to work hard, and you don't want people to complain. Not because complaining, I mean, complaining is like its own issue, right? But because you want people so bought into the outcome that they're willing to do the work. You want to make sure that they're not frustrated that, oh, this happened because we don't have good communication with finance and it's finance's fault. Well, no, it's everyone has to buy in to the solution together and work ardently towards it. And that's just the environment that you want to build. If you have a strong team that you run peacetime, they'll have your back during wartime. I, I, just, I just can't say enough how important this is. So know where you are with your clients. Know if you're in times of peace or if you're in times of war. If you're in times of peace, deposit into that bank account. Build people up. Make the team stronger, more fortified. Then when times of war inevitably come, and I hope they never do for you, but they will, you'll have the team who has your back. And you'll know with confidence that the team will do the best that they can to achieve the outcome that's most important to the organization. This is our work as CMOs. This is our work as leaders. Stay elevated, see where you are, set the context for the team, let them know where they are, and then support them all along the way. All right, I wish you only times of peace, and if you need support as a fractional CMO on winning new clients, on serving them, on these different mental models, on on really the mindset of what it takes to be a leader in a fractional CMO, to really solve bigger problems and work with great companies and make a really great income as a fractional CMO, Come take a look at the CMOX Accelerator. You can book a call with our team at cmox.co forward slash call, cmox.co forward slash call. Book a time with our team. They'll ask you a couple questions. You can ask them a couple questions. If things sound good, you'll talk to another guy on our team who will be able to answer a ton of your questions and see if we can really help you become an in-demand fractional chief marketing officer. All right, talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you for joining us for today's show. For more information and episodes, visit our site at fractionalcmoshow.com. Go ahead and punch that like and subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. It means a lot, at least to my mom. 